This video will illustrate a robotic ureterolysis and all mental wrap. Case is of a 55 year old male with flank pain. He was noted to have hydronephrosis on an ultrasound. He was then sent for an MRI to evaluate for possible mass. Here on the MRI, you can see the hydronephrosis as well as a dis a proximal ureter which collimates to a mid ureteral obstruction. On this film, you can see a mass which is surrounding the iliac artery. This is consistent with retroperitoneal fibrosis, and the ureter can be seen medialized and obstructed by this mass which surrounds the iliac artery. In this patient, we performed a ureteral lysis with three implant. However, he was consented for all of the above possible procedures in case this procedure was unsuccessful or failed. We prefer a low lithotomy, modified flank position that allows access to the bladder as well allows the robot to come from the flank or from the feet. In terms of co-car configuration, we put our camera port just lateral to the umbilicus, spread our left and right arms as far as apart as possible, and then place our system port, which is typically a 5 millimeter trocar, just above the suprapubic area. Here we pick up the video where the colon has already been reflected medially. Here you can see the normal proximal ureter isolated with a vessi loop as it enters the fibrotic mass. The steps to releasing the ureter from this fibrotic mass are as follows. One, anteriorly incise the mass over the ureter. Once the ureter has been identified, we then circumferentially release the ureter out of this fibrotic mass as seen here. This dissection is always performed sharply with a combination of the pots and some blunt dissection as seen. We always avoid using electric artery to prevent further ischemia of the ureter. Lastly, we free out the posterior aspect. This allows us to deal with the most vital structures underneath the ureter, preventing them from injury while we have the best exposure. Again, you can see the vessi loop being used as traction to pull the ureter away from the iliac artery and out of the rind. This stepwise dissection, releasing the ureter out of the fibrotic mass, is performed sequentially from known to unknown all the way toward the bladder. Here you see normal fat surrounding the ureter and this is a sign that we have now released the ureter completely outside of the fibrotic mass. Here we see the distal ureter completely freed up, the mid ureter completely freed, and the proximal ureter completely freed. Here you see an inadvertent ureterotomy that has been created in the anterior ureter. We always recommend repairing this with 4-O-Vicro RB1 suture versus leaving it open such as the Davis intubated urotomy principle. The ureter's blood supply has been compromised and therefore closure should be performed to prevent any problems with healing. Here's a separate patient who developed obstruction after going open AAA repair. Ultrasound shows hydro. The late CT scan shows normal contrast in the right ureter. Left ureter is obstructed. There's a phlegmon over the iliac artery in the mid ureter. We pick up the operation after the ureter lysis has been performed. Here, a stricture is evident. Decision is made to incise the stricture. We do this longitudinally. Here you see the stent within the ureter. And we then close it horizontally using the same principle as the Heinegi Mikulitz. 
the suture utilized is a 4-0 on an RV-1. At this point in the video, we're back to the initial operation. We're creating the elemental flap. We switch our instruments out, left hand, progress, right hand, hot shears. The entire flap usually can be made with these two instruments, especially with magnification. However, when necessary, we will use our harmonic scalpel or an atlas ligature to perform the creation of the elemental flap and get through the vasculature. We pass the omentum underneath the ureter. The lateral aspect of this flap is secured to the sidewall with interrupted 3-0 suture. We perform this fixation of the omentum distally all the way proximally. Here you see us fixing the omentum into the psoas muscle lying posterior to the kidney. At this point, the entire ear has been buffered with omentum posteriorly from the pelvis down toward the bladder. We then pass the medial aspect of the flap over the ureter and again secure it to the side wall. It is this maneuver that creates the full circumferential omental wrap. Here is a laparoscopic view of the final product. That is where the RPF is. Here is where the ureter now lies, wrapped and lateralized with omentum. Here we are one month after the stent has been removed. Patient has no pain, normal ultrasound, good jets. Some tips and tricks to ureterolysis. Always use sharp dissection and minimize cauter around the ureter. Free proximal and distal ureters, which are normal, and then work toward the middle to the abnormal ureter. Close injuries using a Heineke Michelitz technique, and judicious use of momentum on a well vascularized flap. Here are some unpublished data from our NYU experience with robotic urinary reconstruction. For a three and a half year period, we performed 156 cases, 40% were secondary repairs. We had a 97% success rate radiographically, 100% symptomatic success rate, and this was a follow-up of 21 months over two-year period. In summary, robotic urinary reconstruction has distinct advantages. Any open urinal reconstructive procedure may be performed robotically, and we are only at the tip of the iceberg. Both procedures viewed were performed, edited, Annotated by Dr. Michael Stifelman, Director of Robotic Surgery at NYU Langone Medical Center, New York, New York.